John and Lachlan, thank you very much for coming on The Right Note. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. And so Domino's, the, the song that you played, uh, was, I guess, the first taste of your new album, You May Know Garden. It's been mm. out for a few months now, that song. Mm. Why was that song the, the one that you chose to announce the new record? I don't know. It was just like the first one when the whole band's like, oh, this one's pretty good. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. It sort of felt like a good introduction to what the album is in terms of like its like musical journey. So mm. yeah, it just seemed like the, the best candidate to introduce people to this next album. Okay, well, yeah. what can you tell me about that journey? Is it a sonic journey that you're talking yeah, about? Yeah, definitely, or? definitely. Like, uh, well, like one of the biggest things is that on the album, say if it's, a, it's on a record, like the first five tracks are mine mm -hmm. and the last five tracks are his. So there's that journey in itself, but also like, there's like like about a quarter of the way through the synths sort of start to come into the songs mm. and they like come back out again and like yeah also like I feel like vibe wise is a bit it's like not a emotional roller coaster but like it it's like you, it goes places yeah okay. and in terms of that transition I also think that's kind of like why Domino's opened it up was because it's a guitar driven track and we wanted to to like I don't know we we're a guitar band so we wanted to like make a point of that yeah. immediately before mm -hmm. anybody heard anything else. Okay. So, yeah. yeah. Is there a real difference between your songwriting? Can you notice the difference in those five songs that you just mentioned? I reckon the, like, the average person, like, listener would not be able to tell, but I can. Like, yeah. I reckon he's a, a bit more complicated than mine. Okay. And, I don't know. like, yeah. some people can't even tell our voices apart, apparently. <laughs> I think that's ridiculous, but. <laughs> Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. All right. And it's got that line, when all the birds are singing, I get vertigo. Yeah. What does that line, where did that line come from? <sighs> Actually, funny thing is, like, it was just subconsciously from you 2 um, <laughs> Right. Oh, yeah. from the song. Yeah. Right. And also Domino's, because, like, we're... You love pizza? We were trying to get, like, yeah, <laughs> trying to get an endorsement from a certain pizza company. Yeah. yeah. Nah, um... I just know, a, just a disclaimer though, we're not influenced by you two. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I was just kidding. Um, I don't know, it's, when, when I'm making lyrics, I try not to think about it too much because when I do, I end up deleting everything. Because I'm like, no, that's stupid, like, that, don't say that. Like, so I kind of have to just like, run with it, record it, and just forget about it. Okay. And then it comes to today and I have to think about what I said. Like, <laughs> right. Mm. Uh, but yeah, it's just about... Like, when everything's sort of going good, like, oh, it's so hard to explain. It's hard, but it's like circumstantial when everything sort of hits the fan, so to speak. Okay. When everything should be going really well. Okay. Yeah. Is that like a, like a form of armour, do you think? That way that you were just saying that you just kind of have to not censor yeah, yourself, totally. censor yourself, put it out there and then 
forget yeah. about it. Pretty much, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. just you can't overthink it. Yeah. yeah. And I think it may say in your bio, or it was an interview I read where I think you said that the um, the song was written during a difficult year of anxiety yeah. and misadventure. Yeah, I guess that's, yeah, it, it sort of came from that, like, oh, that's right. I've, it, it was sort of like, a, because it was going to be like the first song, we sort mm -hmm. of knew that early on-ish, because the guitars and all that sort of stuff. It was sort of telling a story about like where we sort of went through, like, um, through those hardships and stuff. But like... Still has to be pretty ambiguous because it has to relate to other people as well. Yeah. Um, mm. But yeah. yeah, it was also like for me in terms of the recording, re re relating to the whole story of it, it was like it was me having to be like, no, I don't need synthesizers. Like this is just guitar. Like this is just us. Like this yeah. is just me on a guitar. No effects. Because usually it, you sort of get lost with synthesizers and effects just like like juice it up or cover it up and make it just a bit more interesting, but decided to go like completely dry mm -hmm. and raw for this one in particular. Okay. Just as like a way of being like, no, it, it can be like this. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And you've done a lot of traveling since we saw you last. I think um, Arita in Japan is where you went to mm. write a lot of this record. Yeah. What, mm. uh, how did you, well, tell me why you went to Arita and what it was like there. Um, well, uh, a good friend of ours, um, Dan, uh, who also sometimes plays drums for us. Um, he's also half Japanese, and like, um, but yeah, he, uh, his family has a house down there, and it's a kind of there's a bit of like an artistic revival happening there because it's actually the the porcelain capital of Japan, the ancient porcelain ca porcelain capital of Japan because it's on the um, it's on the west coast, so it's close to Korea, and they Japan the Japanese emperor actually kidnapped a, a Korean. Um, I don't know, what do you call him, a potter right. or something like that, and um, it imported him and got porcelain happening, cracking <laughs> off in Japan. <laughs> right. But uh, anyway, it, it's, got, it's got like a bit of a sort of a creative heritage there, but now um, Dan's uh, dad is sort of reviving the place, bringing all internationals in, and we've got, we're really fortunate enough to have really good supportive network already mm. there, so yeah. we've mm. got access to a beautiful isolated studio, beautiful homes to stay at. Mm. It's really fortunate, but it's it, incredibly isolated. It really does feel like a ghost town. So um, I don't know was, we seized that opportunity. So Because people left there? People abandoned it? Or? Yeah, yeah. It's, just, it's like a big problem in Japan, like everyone's just going to the cities. So mm. there's so many empty houses right. in that town. Mm. But yeah, like, like we were saying, like artists are starting to go in. So mm. like last time we were there, there was three artists camping on the bottom floor of an apartment building that's been completely trashed and they're going to renovate it. They can, and they, they have permission to just live in it if they want, mm, wow. but they have to pay for the renovations. Yeah. Right. So they're just going to camp and then like yeah. just have a go at doing it up and just having their own floor of an apartment building. It's crazy. Yeah. But like the guy who owns the studio that we used, he um, is a doctor in art and oh. he's an, a noise musician. Oh, like, wow. are you familiar with noise? Yeah. The genre? Yeah, yeah. There's two types of noise. There's one that's like heavy droney noise, which is then great. Really just noise. Noise. Yeah, noises. Noise and noises. <laughs> noises. Like yeah. four guys making different noises. Okay. At the same time. Yep. Yeah. And then recording it and putting it on a vinyl and selling it and stuff. But yeah, he was a really interesting dude. Um, so yeah, we had access to that great studio where we could just really feel that isolation because we sort of just wanted to. For this album, we, we wanted more than anything for it to sound just like us. Mm -hmm. Hence why we produced it ourselves. There's no one else like influencing it, telling us what we can't do, what we should do. Mm -hmm. um, and going to Japan meant that like, it was like more focus on our own sort of like, or, like the influences that are already in, within us. Yeah. So we didn't have like other people around us like listening to different music, like sure. all that sort of stuff. Because our studio in Brisbane, um, has like a whole bunch of bands hanging out all the time. So right. we just wanted to just feel really like locked in a room kind okay. of thing. Yeah. Can you hear that isolation in the music? I think so because it sounds like us more than anything. Mm -hmm. And like we're really proud of that because something we never really thought we could do is just make it ourselves. But like, part, like this album is almost like an experiment to show other people as well and ourselves that it's totally possible to make something to a professional standard with very basic software and gear. Okay. Mm. Um, and it's just more about the actual 
songs, you know, right. and the vibe as well. Like that was one thing we noticed was the vibe from demos must be like maintained because mm. that's mm. that's ha- like that's half of the whole song. It's like mm. the accidental sounds that you created that are unique and can't be recreated. Yeah. Like in a studio. Okay. Mm. So does that suggest that the fact that this sounds exactly as you want it to sound? Does that suggest your first two albums there were things there that you weren't quite kind of yeah like yeah but with? like they they turn out perfectly fine but it's just like just we can hear things where it's like oh mm. I wish I did it this way I wish mm. I did this or mm. I wish we kept on doing this instead of doing that or yeah you know, it's, but like in retrospect like it's all yeah like, yeah we don't have any bad feelings about it necessarily it's, it's just, just Things yeah. are certainly out of your hands for good reason. Yeah. Like the, you know, we we can't do everything, but I think on this record we're definitely taking more responsibilities, mm. and yeah, definitely on the music side thing, it's like we're confident enough to yeah. be like, you yeah. know, we're we're all a bit older, so yeah. Yeah. we but can also, do it. Also, there's a lot of things that we've done where you'd show an engineer and they'd be like, "What are you doing?" Like, right, exactly. <laughs> but it's just like it's it's good enough and it works, it or works. it's like perfect. Mm. I think like one in one one instance locks kept the vocals from the demo and the song sped up or slowed down and the software's not that great so it stretched the audio out and it's like it's messed it up okay. pretty mm. bad okay mm. but it still sounds kind of cool yeah and we could never make that again like you couldn't recreate it and we could re-record it again but it already had a vibe so we we're just like no nah, mm. let's just use it yeah what yeah. song is that is that on the new album yeah, it's the last track on the last on, on, yeah, the, on, the, on a, the album. It's yeah. a guitar. Okay. It's a guitar solo. Okay, like, just at the end, and I could yeah, definitely try and play it again, but I don't know. It just I I didn't want to because I knew what was going to happen, and and at the end of the day, I I think the the effective component of like those demos, like it will always be retained. Sure. So it's like, and that's more important than whether it. Sounds high fi or not? Yeah, you know, mm. or like perfect, you know, just perfect to the engineer. Like, yeah. not to discount like the importance of like what they do, but I think we want to like cherish that now because like so much music out there that we enjoy, like SoundCloud music, which is so poorly mixed, mm-hmm. you know, poorly mixed or something like that. But it doesn't matter to us, and it doesn't matter to a lot of people. So yeah, yeah. So that was Japan, but I understand America also played a part for you in terms 100%. of a trip there. So what what was what were you doing over there, and what was the um, influence? <laughs> I was just there um, stuffing around really. I was just um, kind of just became infatuated with California because it was just, I don't know, it was always seems like, you know, it's just like on TV your whole entire life. And I don't know, I just kind of realized that it was a, like truly realized it was a real place. Yeah. I wanted to go there. But it was also kind of, um, we took on the sort of uh, concept of like city pop and city pop art for this album and city, in relation city to is. California. So city pop is like 1980s, basically, it's 1980s like funk pop music, oh, Japanese okay. funk pop music, right. but it's like full adoration of like the American dream in California. So it's like the, the art, lands, like the land, it's always a Californian landscape. And I don't know, I thought it was relevant to us to like sort of be inspired by that um, because, you know, the, the Japanese had this sort of over-glorification of like that whole perfect America, Californian thing. And that's kind of like how, exactly how I felt. And, you know, it's just this, they, they have like a beautiful idea of it, but it's like wrong because, you know, as I said, like, as Sean was saying before, you know, like we need that isolation. That's a very Japanese thing in itself also. Mm-hmm. That they're like just really, they've always been isolated, always been introverted. But when they latch on to something, see something foreign that they love, they they become very inspired by it. So, mm. yeah, there's okay. a lot of that. Yeah, right. Mm. So that and that played into what you were wanting to write. I yeah, definitely. Okay. Um, the actual all the content of the songs was written before I went to America. Okay. But it was all like sonically, it was definitely influenced by that. There are some songs which are inspired directly by you know just people in America or something like that. But okay. I don't know, it's all, I don't know, it's all very yeah. vague, but okay. it's real. Yeah. Is, it, is it gonna be an easy album to bring to life, live? Or, or a difficult Actually, album? yeah, it's turning out to be pretty easy. Cause um, it's been actually really fun, to be honest. Like, I haven't actually had this much fun rehearsing ever because 
there's a few tricks in there, like guitar wise, and we've always been like trying to make the guitar sound different or do stuff that people think like how the hell do you do that? Yeah. And yeah, luckily we have the opportunity to do that on a few of these songs. Um, and I got to upgrade my pedal board and stuff, so <laughs> it's pretty good. And like we were very conscious of like the fact that the last album was like I just layered it with synths and certain tracks and it's like mm -hmm. you can't actually play that all those synths. Yeah. So we were very conscious about let's keep it really stripped down. And then for instance on my songs, I didn't double track any guitar. So normally you'd have like rhythm guitar left and right and it's coming at you and it's like like that. Yeah. I just wanted one guitar, his guitar, one vocal, like you know what I mean? Just yeah, like just a really very simple. just punch you in the face sort of thing. Like because I work in a record store and I noticed the stuff that sounds the best is the stuff that's the rawest and is not double tracked. Yeah. And it's just the most honest and like authentic sounding and it's just like right there. It's right in front of you and you can really just take it on. Yeah. So I was very conscious, especially with my songs, with that. And like when it came to like working on his songs too, I just like, I, like take a few things out because I realised, you know, people won't actually hear. Yeah. People like, there's the thing, like people won't listen to one thing at a time. Right. So I really took that on board and like considered like what actually needs to go on. So in a live context, it, it sounds like some cases better and okay. some cases like the exact same. Right. So it's been nice. pretty fun. Okay. Yeah. Well, I look forward to, uh, to seeing it come to life when, yeah. when you hit the road. Is that going to be this year or next year? Do you yeah, think? so we got October tour for the singles, mm -hmm. for the single tour. Yep. Um, but the album comes out at the exact same time. And then we'll do a, uh, probably a tour around the first quarter of next year, because right. I don't know if, if I'm allowed to say anything about that yet. All right. But it's around March. Great. Yeah. <laughs> Look uh, forward yeah. to it. Thanks again for coming on the show. Thanks, Thanks for having us. us.